Hi, this is Tom Shanahan of SpiritualAdrenaline.me. You know, nutrition, weight training are both important components of the Spiritual Adrenaline Recovery Plan. You know, by eating right and then exercising both weight training and cardiovascular activity, we lead to a healthy body and a healthy mind, and it helps us connect on a spiritual level. Many people, including me, uh, came into recovery with a belly. I didn't have a beer belly, but I did have a muffin top. And over time, bad habits, that's what happens in the core area. So this video, we're gonna be speaking with Chris Campley, who's a certified personal trainer, about how to transition from a beer belly or a muffin top to six-pack abs. So Chris, thank you so much for coming. Thank in. you for having me today, Tom. So if I wanna transition, I, I had a muffin top on mm -hmm. five or six years ago, uh, from a muffin top, beer belly, to kind of a six-pack look, what do I gotta do? One thing is you gotta make sure that you're eating smart. Another thing is you wanna limit the stress that you put on your body. You know, cortisol is a fight or flight hormone that's released when your body feels emotional stress or physical stress. A lot of the time, cortisol is okay in small amounts, but if you are promoting the stress for over long periods of time, it tends to grab fat from other areas like your glutes and hips and bring them to this, the core where there's more cortisol receptors and that starts accumulating fat, accumulating fat over time mm -hmm. and that adds the fat around your stomach as well. You know, I, I, I did some research on, on the issue and it's interesting that, you know, long-term substance abuse causes so much stress on the internal organs, for example, the liver, mm -hmm. from trying to process huge amounts of alcohol that it also releases lots of cortisol and you see that's a big part of why people wind up with the beer mm -hmm. belly. But what about eating right and how does that play into this? You know, eating right, you know, when you eat a lot of processed foods, you know, it really puts a lot of stress on the body, you know, mm -hmm. trying to break that foods down, you know, going through the liver as well, you know, it really puts a lot of stress on the liver. You know, you're, if you're eating foods like McDonald's or you're going to a fast food outlet some, or eating processed foods, it's really going to put that stress and it's going to add that excess calories that's going to tend to spill over into the core. To really focus on trying to bring that core down, you want to eat refined foods, good carbs, you want to stay um, away from processed foods, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you know, you're putting as little stress on the body from a physical level as well as an emotional level. What's interesting is you talk about emotional stress mm -hmm. and then you talked about stress on the internal body from eating mm -hmm. you know, comfort foods or processed foods. I'm talking about stress on the body from putting substances in mm -hmm. the body that are causing the internal organs to flare. So all of this really does come together. Yes. Question is, if someone decides to eat right, but yet they, they also want to work in an overall exercise regimen, how many days a week and how much time should they be spending on trying to uh, lean down the core, both from a cardio point of view and then also from a weight training point of view? If you're engaging your core correctly in each movement, whether it's a chest movement or a back movement or a leg movement, your core is always going to be engaged. So your core is going to be working throughout the whole program. Mm -hmm. As far as focusing on the core, doing ab movements, you don't have to focus on them every day. I would say maybe, you know, a couple days a week, three days a week, hit them maybe unweighted once in a nice isometric position another time as a plank or side plank, and then hit them weighted another time for focus on the rectus abdominis. Because you want to build the muscle a little bit as well, so you do want to hit the core weighted, not all the time because that can turn it blocky. Cardio is what's really going to show the core. Right. Cardio is what's going to slim, uh, build, or take that fat away, you know, slim you down and lean you out. You know, the core is going to be underneath that. So even if you build the core from a strength training aspect, without the cardio, you're not going to be able to see it and it's going to still and what's a word of caution for people who are just getting started to avoid injury? I'm concerned because the lower back, once you mm -hmm. do that, you're out of the game. So what do you recommend? I recommend to stay away from any type of sit-ups right away. I would want to go more towards the, the, the planks because the planks are really focused on your TVA and they really help build lower back support. Mm -hmm. So instead of going right into a weighted sit-up or one of the ab machines in the gym and just doing it, you want to you want to build the core and build that strength and feel it. So you want to keep your core contracted for, through each movement. So instead of going into the, the exercise, just doing it and feeling it because you're crunching, you want to focus on keeping your core contracted, keeping that lower back stable, whether if you're on your back, you want to keep it pushed into the ground. If you're in a plank, you want to keep it straight, keep those hips in a neutral position. Um, and you want to just keep, you want to build the core in a way that you're not going to overdo it because you're going to start to 
like you said, you know, cause some issues to the lower back area. Well, Chris, thank you so much. And you heard it today. There's an interrelationship between everything, what you're eating, the amount of exercise you're getting, and the type of exercise. And they all come together, and they'll help you build a healthier body and a healthier mind. Chris, thanks again. If you're interested in more information on this topic or working with Chris, you can reach him at www.chrisandjacks.com. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tom.